Hi everyone! You probably know that the most important thing about photography is lighting. Some might say, wait, what? But there is nothing more important than composition. But hear me out, lighting is also an aspect of composition. So today we are going to talk about lighting in photography. What types of lighting there are, how to control and use them. And if you watch this video till then, you'll also learn how to set lighting in your studio without blowing your budget. Sure, pricey pro equipment will give you a stunning result, but first let's try talking baby steps. Off we go! Before we actually begin, I want to educate the newbies that might be watching us. There are two types of lighting, natural and artificial. The natural lighting is the light that is out of our control, like the sun. The artificial lighting covers everything else. Seems clear enough until you learn that there are two types of artificial lighting, namely continuous and strobe. The strobe lighting sources involves flashes. The continuous lighting sources feature the rest of lighting equipment. This might sound confusing, so let's first talk about natural lighting and how to work with it. As I said before, natural lighting is something that we can control, but I wasn't completely honest. Sure, we can control it directly, but we can correct it. If you are shooting outdoors, it's important to choose choose the best time and work uh, with uh, the weather you face. For instance, professional photographers strongly advise against shooting images from 1 to 4 pm, since the sun is at its highest point then. The sun is right above you, it seems nice and all, but it throws a signature shadow down your model's face. Those shadows under the eyes aren't nice at all. It's better to avoid this lighting, but if you can't help it, make use of a reflector to soften the shadow. Just like with artificial lighting, there is no need to buy top tier equipment. Any white surface can serve as a reflector. Even a sheet of paper can do the job. See for yourself. Just take a regular sheet of paper and put it against your chin. You'll see the effect. Moreover, should your model wear a white t-shirt, you'll see way more subtle shadow in the chin area. It's just another proof. While talking about natural lighting, I should certainly mention the golden hour or the blue hour. In photography, the golden hour is the time right after sunrise when the sunlight is off. The blue hour is the time right before sunset. Make no mistake, the term hour doesn't imply that uh, this moment lasts for the whole 60 minutes. I've had many instances uh, where I stupidly missed the moment for various reasons reason, so always be vigilant. But whatever lighting you use and no matter what conditions you shoot in, never skip post-production. One of the best tools for it is PhotoWorks. This is a photo editor with a user-friendly interface that allows you to enhance your images in just a few clicks. Color correction, cropping, abundance of filters, these are just a few features you can find in PhotoWorks. Even if you failed to capture the sun in your images, you can easily add a realistic sun rays effect. Apart from that, PhotoWorks allows you to retouch faces, edit the body, overlay multiple images and so much more. Just follow the link in the description to try this photo editor for yourself and order it and an amazing discount. Now let's move on to something really fascinating. Artificial lighting on a shoestring budget. What do you require? How to assemble and place everything? Studio lighting equipment is a rich market, but we first need to get a starter kit. Judging by my experience, a single lighting source is enough to get started. However, since most beginners skip this step, you can move on to two sources right away. The first source will be used as the shaping light that would shape a certain light and shadow pattern. And the second source will be used as the rim light that will separate your model from the background. Having a reflector is not obligatory but is rather just an option. Here is the classical lighting scheme. You put the main light source at 45 degrees in relation to your model, then you put the rim light behind them. Finally, you use the reflector to sketch the rim light and direct uh, this light at the darker area. This will soften the stark shadow. Actually, you can achieve a decent result with the cheapest softbox. And speaking of 
soft boxes. What lighting equipment should you buy? The answer is simple, the one you can afford. Just be aware that artificial lighting equipment differs in so many aspects. Some use LEDs, others incandescent bulbs. There is the light temperature, brightness, CRI or even frequency. I'll cut right to the chase. It's better if you buy LED equipment with a natural temperature that is similar to daylight. Budget-friendly equipment usually has questionable brightness since it rarely has uh, dimmers. Even if there is a dimmer, you can switch. You will also change the light frequency. I don't have a light with a dimmer, but I can show you the effect on this LED stripe. Once I lower its brightness, you'll see an unsightly straw. So we'll just control the brightness in other way. Now let's focus on CRI, color range index. I won't be going into much detail, as it all will sound too technical and scare away newbies. In a nutshell, CRI is the quality of light. The higher the value, the better and the more realistic your picture are. Here is an example. One gives a greenish tint that spoils the color accuracy. Sure, it's not a disaster since we can edit the image uh, to restore last hue. Some pros will have a bond to pick with me and they have the right to do it. After all, some of the hues will be lost forever. Here is another problem. It's not easy to determine the CRI of the cheaper projector. When I bought this, I couldn't find this information anywhere. It's probably not that crucial for this kind of equipment. So if you have an opportunity, test this equipment before buying it or look for examples of its usage on the internet. We can't skip talking about color lighting. The market is full of RGB light. Let's try and other equipment that will help you create a colorful ambience in the frame. I have this portable device. It allows me to easy set any color I want. Besides, it's wireless and has a built-in battery which means I can use it outdoors at night maybe. But what if you only have a white light? Luckily there are color filters for this light. These filters are a film of sort. But if you go for a pro version, be prepared to pay handsomely. These color films are both light transmitting and light absorbing. If you are on a budget, do what I did. I just bought a few transparent plastic folders at a stationery store. I used them to cover the light and get whatever thing I want. This is what I'm doing right now. But remember that the thickness of these folders varies and the some transmit more light, others less. But here's a life hack. Just use the flash on your smartphone to check the effect and see if you like it. Now a few words about brightness. If you know your way around electronics and can connect a couple of wires, you can create your own dimmer. But since we are now going on conventional road and using DIY hacks, here is another one for you. A regular plastic bag will help you diffuse the light and create a makeshift softbox. So let's summarize what we've learned. Sure, some pros might be pulling their hair out because of my hacks. Bags, folders, cheap light. Are you for real? Hear me out. When you are only beginning to grasp the lighting, there is no need to spend a fortune on equipment. What if you decide that photography is not up your alley? What are you going to do with the expensive equipment? Resell it? It's unlikely you will succeed. I hope this video was userful. If so, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. This way you'll never miss another video. My name is Victor. Thanks for watching and see you next time.